The command pattern is a behavioral design pattern that solves the problem of tight coupling when you need to separate the logic that's responsible for invoking some action from the logic that's responsible for knowing how that action should be performed. Some of the more popular use cases for the pattern are the implementation of an undo feature and the ability to support macros so you can perform multiple actions at once. In this video, we're gonna step through a simple implementation of the undo use case so you can see how the command pattern can be implemented in Unity and get a better understanding of what the pattern is all about. But first, if you want more content just like this, sign up for my Level 2 Game Dev Newsletter. Level 2 is all about helping you develop the skills needed to take your game dev hobby or career to the next level. Once a month, we'll send you a curated list of content that'll help you take the next step on your game dev journey. If you're interested, visit the link in the description to sign up now. All right, let's take a look at our command pattern example project. Our example project represents the early stages of a small turn-based tactics game. I'm not yet sure what direction I wanna take it in, so for now, I've only implemented a few basic actions. Each unit can move in one of four directions and jump or spin in response to user input, which I've wired up using Unity's input system package. Like I said, early stages. I've also included support for turn-based gameplay with a player and a single NPC. Now let's take a high level look at the logic that's responsible for what we've seen so far. The code boils down to two mono behaviors, unit and turn controller. The unit class exposes three public functions, one for each of the actions that we just saw during our demo. It also contains a bunch of plumbing that exists to facilitate the animations and effects that correspond with each of the unit's actions. The turn controller is what drives our turn-based gameplay. This one also has a bit of plumbing, but the import logic can be found in the update method where the NPC's turn is handled, and in these three callbacks that are invoked by Unity's input system, where the player's input is translated directly into the actions that are called on the player's unit. I'm pretty happy with the logic that I've written so far, and after reviewing the code, I don't think it needs to be refactored. So there's only one thing left to do. It's time to add more features. Now, there are a couple of ways that I could proceed. I could begin fleshing out a health system, start by laying down the groundwork for keeping score, or even improve my unit class by adding support for more actions. But if you were paying attention earlier, you may have noticed that my rudimentary UI hints at what I'd like to do next. I'd like to give the player the ability to rewind or undo actions. But looking at the logic that's responsible for invoking actions on our unit, it isn't immediately obvious to me how I can begin to support these features. So we're gonna have to think logically and break this down into small steps. Let's start by considering our undo feature. The ability relies on this concept of rewinding, which itself implies that something has been recorded. You can't rewind something that hasn't been recorded. So let's create a class that'll be responsible for recording our actions. I'll go ahead and call it action recorder and add a couple of methods called record and rewind. So we have somewhere to put our future logic. We should also add a serialized reference of action recorder to turn controller since it'll need to reference it later. There. Now rewind will just undo a single action. So I don't think it'll need any parameters. But for record, we're gonna need to be able to pass in some representation of an action, so the action recorder can record it. For example, if we wanted to record a jump, we need an object to represent that. Let's call it jump action, and add a method called execute. Of course, it'll need to know which unit is performing the jump, so we'll need to include that information somehow as well. We could technically pass the unit as an argument to execute, but that would defeat the purpose because this object is supposed to represent a single action in its entirety. It's an immutable record of something that's happened. So instead, let's include the unit as a private field that we'll initialize in the constructor. Now we can call jump on that unit when the execute method is invoked and include jump action as an argument to the record method. So we can call execute when it's invoked. 
Finally, we can pass it in when the player triggers the on jump input callback to complete the chain. So that's a decent start. We've created an object to represent a unit jumping, which our action recorder will be able to store and undo if the player decides to rewind. But before we implement that piece, let's create objects to represent the other actions that units can perform. We're gonna want action recorder to be able to record any type of action that a unit can perform, but the record method is currently only accepting jump actions. To remedy that, let's extract a super class from the jump action class so the recorder can work with an abstraction that represents a generic action instead. I'm gonna use a shortcut here, but you can easily do this by hand. We'll call it action base, include the unit field and constructor, and make execute an abstract method. Then use action base to implement both spin action and move action. The only difference is that the move action will need to include a direction that we can pass in on the constructor. Great. Now let's move these into their own class files. Modify action recorder's record method to take an action base object and update the turn controller to use our new action classes. All of the pieces are in place. We've successfully separated the logic that's responsible for invoking our unit's actions from the logic that's responsible for knowing how those actions should be performed. This decoupling will give us enough space to add new logic without muddying the code that's concerned with facilitating our turn-based gameplay, namely our undo logic. Let's add that now. First, we'll add a stack object to Action Recorder to maintain a first-in, last-out list of actions. Then we'll push each action that gets recorded onto the top of the stack. Finally, when rewind is called, we'll pop the last action that was pushed and call undo on that action. Of course, we haven't implemented that yet, so let's add undo to action base as an abstract method, and then implement it on each subclass. For jump and spin, we'll go ahead and just call those again, although we could certainly implement some custom logic here. And for move, we'll just pass in the opposite direction. Perfect. Let's test it out in Unity. Works like a charm. If you haven't guessed it yet, we've just used the command pattern to implement this feature. And now that you've seen it, let's review the formal definition. The command pattern is a behavioral design pattern that turns a request into a standalone object that contains all information about that request. This transformation lets you pass requests as method arguments, delay or queue a request execution, and support undoable operations. The pattern consists of four key elements, command, receiver, invoker, and client. The command is an object that knows about the receiver and invokes a method on the receiver using values that are stored on itself. The receiver is the object that does the work when the execute method is called on the command object. In our case, action base is the command and the unit is the receiver. The invoker is the object that knows how to execute a command and can optionally do some bookkeeping about the command execution. In our case, action recorder is the invoker and it bookkeeps by maintaining a stack of previously executed actions. Finally, the client is the object that decides which receiver is assigned to the command objects and which commands it assigns to the invoker. And we can see here that our client is the turn controller. It should go without saying that design patterns provide a description of common solutions to common problems. They aren't prescriptive about the implementation details, so you could implement your own version of the command pattern and there'd be nothing wrong with that. 
so long as it fits the criteria that's laid out by the pattern and more importantly, it solves whatever problem you're trying to solve, you're using the pattern effectively. In the case of our example, I made a number of subtle design decisions to facilitate the undo feature that I aim to implement, and I'm happy with the overall result. If you'd like to take a closer look at this code yourself, I've made the Unity project available to my Tier 2 patrons, who can download it using the link in the description. I'd like to challenge you to see if you can implement a macro command that can execute multiple unit actions in a single turn. Don't forget to support undo as well. If you can do it, send your code to my email address at charles at infalliblecode.com or via Facebook, Twitter, or Discord. Don't forget to sign up for the Level 2 Game Dev newsletter for more content just like this. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to the Infallible Code YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you to all of my patrons, and a special shout out to Nicholas Monter, Datwo, Jennifer Irwin, Urizer, Alan Curavilla, Umit Sarin, Dustin, Petrio Bungo, and Usif Ali Castle. Thank you so much for your support.